You're in the Ron Book Show. Who's this? Hey, Ron. This is Michael. Hey, Michael. How's it going? Yeah, I think you remember me. We had a debate a couple months back. Uh, no, I, wait, you called in? No, we had a debate. I, we, me and you got into the DMs. We had a debate on uh, uh, Jordan Peterson. Oh, yeah, debate on Jordan Peterson. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. I don't want to bring it back up, but I've been I've watched it again, and I uh, I want to follow up on a question I asked you that you never answered during the debate. Sure, I doubt I never answered it, but I'll try again. Well, you you didn't, but I think you were about to. I, I might I might me, okay. Go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> okay, well, we was talking about how the uh, the relevance of suffering, right? And you was saying suffering, and I quote, is irrelevant. It's the incidental. And the point that I was trying to make, see, you're very, you're, you're very well gifted verbally, way more than I am. And I've, that was my first public debate, so it was kind of hard for me to articulate what I was thinking. But that is fine. This is what I was saying. This is what I was saying. There is no joy or happiness without suffering, because we use suffering to gauge goals and happiness. It is, it is crucial. And just for an example. The recognition of suffering is crucial to the human experience. For example, in the 17th century, you know, having indoor plumbing, was, I mean, it, I don't know if it was around then, but it was a luxury. You know? There was no indoor it plumbing in the 17th century, but okay. Okay, well, whenever yeah. indoor plumbing started, yeah. it was a luxury. Yep. Now it's all part of the norm. The feeling, the feeling is, is, ambli- is, is ambivalent yeah. in nature. Yeah. The standards have changed. Yep. So one could argue that daily recognition of suffering is required for human flourishing because yeah. without I, suffering, you don't know what joy is. You have to have something. Oh, just I don't, for the I don't way buy that. Work. Look, I don't buy that. And, well, and, it, and it's what the argument you're making is not Jordan Peterson's argument. You know, you, you, the yeah, argument you're is. making, it isn't, it isn't. I mean, I've, I've watched more Jordan Peterson since we talked and it's not. So everybody's trying to whitewash Jordan Peterson. And, you know, I love the guy because I, I watch him all the time, and he's really smart, and he's really good. So this is not a knock on Jordan Peterson. but And, and I think Jordan Peterson will agree with me. I don't think – I think I'm interpreting him right, and, and, and you guys are interpreting wrong. You guys are trying to make him out to be something he is not. He's not an objectivist, and he's not consistent with objectivism, and he would reject objectivism. He would throw the book out the window. He does not agree – with almost anything in objectivism. And I think Jordan Peterson would, would say, you're on, you're absolutely right. Because I don't think for a minute he is delusional enough to think that what he's advocating for is consistent with objectivism. Now, maybe he's right and objectivism is wrong. I'm willing to concede that that's a possibility. But I'm not willing to concede the idea that Jordan Peterson is consistent philosophically with objectivism. Because he's not. Now, let me get to the suffering question. Metaphysically. Yes, please answer it. Just, just act like... Act like you're right, and Jordan Peterson doesn't believe that. I would love to see you argue against that. Absolutely. Metaphysically, um, metaphysically, there are there are two things that exist for human being: uh, pain and pleasure. We have a pain pleasure mechanism built in. One is not primary over the other. It's not pain that makes pleasure possible or pleasure that makes pain possible. They are two features that exist in human existence. From when we are born, we have the ability to suffer pain and we have the ability of pleasure to, to have joy. We have both abilities and, and uh, uh, you know, babies experience both. And to say that what's fundamental What's metaphysical is not just suffering, but the tragic, that life is fundamentally tragic, is to give death and suffering too much emphasis. And let let me just be clear about this. Ayn Rand would flip out to think that you would say that. I mean, Ayn Rand considered suffering, and she writes about this, so this is not me inventing what Ayn Rand said. She She considers suffering incidental, unimportant, not relevant to life. And, and if you think about the first time Dagny sees John Galt and, and, and what mm-hmm. she sees him in his eyes, it's the eyes of a man who doesn't let suffering make any difference in his life. Suffering doesn't go deeper than the momentary. It's insignificant in his life. And that's what makes him John Galt. So, you know, agree or disagree, that's not Jordan Peterson. It, 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 you know, okay, and, I- 
I, I, I didn't call to, to debate with you or nothing. I just want you to answer the actual question. I answered it. I mean, I, uh, I just did. You didn't because you you said we can suffer and we can, but I'm explaining to you why it is crucial. And I'm to explaining to you suffering. that it's not because it I mean, I recognize suffering. Nobody is ignoring suffering. But what Jordan Peterson does is it gives it primacy. And I'm rejecting the idea of it being primary. Suffering does not define joy. Joy and suffering come into being, if you will, when we open our eyes, when we come into being. They are equal parts of life. One is not superior to the other. One is not greater than the other. One does not make the other possible. They are both in our biology relevant at the same time. You, you, you can stroke a baby and you can give them pleasure and you can pinch him and give him pain. And biologically, those are equal. One is not superior to the other. Suffering is not what makes joy possible. That is absurd. Not in the concrete. No, that's not what I'm arguing. In but any context. Not, saying, not in any context. Well, yeah, it, it does because you don't know what joy is without That's just not suffering. true. It's, it's just a fact. That is just... It's a logical fact. That's not true. You don't need the contrast I, with pain in order to... How joy is? Because, because you get it from the pleasure mechanism, right? You get it from the fact that somebody caresses you when you're a baby and you feel good because of it, because it feels good. It's an emotion. It's, it's, it's a sensation, not even an emotion, of pleasure. That's what – everything is based on the sensation of pleasure and pain. That's how we start with those. And suffering is a consequence of experiencing the pain, and joy is – or pleasure is a consequence of experiencing pleasure. So, and we experience pleasure as a primary, not as a derivative of suffering. So you, you don't experience joy because it contrasts with, with suffering. You experience joy because it contrasts with nothing, with, with the state of just being. I'm just being. Now somebody caresses me. Ooh, that feels good. Cool. Somebody pinches me. Ooh, that feels bad. Suffering. That's how it works. I think the explanation is a little convoluted. Uh, well, from, that's fine. You can, can think that. Question? <laughs> you can ask me one more question, and then I need to go on. <laughs> I, I didn't call to make you mad, Iran. You, oh, no, I'm not you mad. I, I get passionate. <laughs> I get passionate. I'm not mad. But but I think you're trying to resist my answer. I think my answer makes complete no, sense. Not. And I, and if you if you think about it purely, right. if you take a baby, just think about a baby, think about the experiences of a baby, and think about what those experiences are, and you think biologically that before suffering there is pain, and that the fundamental the fundamental experience of, 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 a, of, a, of an infant is that pain pleasure mechanism, then I, yep. then I think you really start gaining an understanding of what joy means and what suffering means and what implications they have. And when you make the pinching, yep. the, the suffering, the focus mm -hmm. of everything you talk about as Jordan Peterson does, you make that primary, that is really bad. It, it becomes the equivalent of original sin. I don't. I absolutely agree with what you're saying, and I'm not. Okay. Good. You know, trying to dodge it in any way. Good. I just think that you're parsing what I'm saying. But we'll move on. Okay. I just want to let you know. I agree that pleasure and pain are are the real thing, and I'm thinking this is completely separate, and that's what I'm trying to make. No, you you build up the concept. So of, you build up the concept of suffering from the concept of pain, and you build up the concept of joy from the concept of pleasure. So the first thing you experience, see concepts, and again, uh, Jordan Peterson would not agree with what I'm about to say. Concepts are in a, uh, integration, uh, abstract concepts like, 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 uh, like uh, joy and, um, and suffering, uh, abstract concepts that are built up from concrete. And the concrete you start with as a human being are pleasure and pain. And if you build up the pleasure concrete, you get joy. If you build up the, the, the pain concrete, you get suffering. You can have those abstractions without the experiences that build them up. And one of those is not more fundamental than the other. I would actually argue that in a healthy human being, the experience of pleasure far outweighs, in terms of importance and significance in, in, in life, far outweighs right. the importance of the pain and therefore the suffering. But that's not the impression I get from period. Jordan. And again, I, I say this with spirit. all the love to Jordan Peterson because I admire him and I think he's really interesting, but <laughs> I don't agree with yeah. him. Uh, I, maybe, maybe I should have said happiness and suffering, but either way, here's my second question. I, uh, I would still disagree with you. It, 
<laughs> well, I, I wouldn't because I see, I see them differently, but we're never going to get anywhere, and I want to ask the second question. Yep. I know you like to be right, but can I ask my second question? Well, it's not that I okay. like to be right. It's just that I am. 